This is the heat of solution lab where we're going to find the heat of solution of two different salts. Uh, we're going to be working with sodium hydroxide and potassium chloride today, two different ionic compounds. And we're going to be determining their heat of solution, which is how much energy is released or absorbed uh, as they dissolve in water. We're going to use a simple calorimeter today, which is going to be an insulated coffee cup. And we're going to start with 75 milliliters of room temperature water. So we have 75 milliliters of water, which is 75 grams of water. And we're going to find the initial temperature of the water in our calorimeter. So we're using our digital thermometer here. And we'll find the initial temperature of the water. Looks like 21.4 degrees Celsius is the initial temperature of the water. What we're going to do now is dissolve some salt in the water. We'll start with the sodium hydroxide. So I'll measure out a small sample of sodium hydroxide. And I'm weighing it on my electronic balance here. I have 6.28 grams of sodium hydroxide. 6.28 grams of sodium hydroxide. So it's an ionic compound. It looks like that. It's a solid right now. And as it dissolves in water, many ionic solids uh, either absorb heat or give off heat as they dissolve in water. So we're going to take our sodium hydroxide, pour it into our water, and we'll stir. And we'll see as it dissolves how the temperature of the water is affected. And you can see right now that the temperature of the water is going up. It hasn't completely dissolved yet. You can see there's still a number of solid pieces of sodium hydroxide in our calorimeter. We're going to keep stirring until the sodium hydroxide has completely dissolved and until the temperature of the water has stopped changing. We can see that the temperature is going up quite a bit, so we can say that this is an exothermic reaction. The heat of solution of sodium hydroxide is giving off heat and therefore making the water hotter. It's continuing to dissolve, I'm just stirring it to help it dissolve a little bit more quickly. And the temperature continues to go up because heat is being released as the sodium hydroxide dissolves. We're going to be able to figure out how much heat was released using the equation Q is equal to delta T times mass times specific heat. We know the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we can assume that the specific heat of this solution is about the same as water. And it looks like we've reached the maximum temperature here just about it's almost done dissolving. See a few more solids in there. It's completely dissolved, and we have a final temperature of 40.4. So you can use the final temperature and the initial temperature to find the temperature change. We know the mass of water was 75 grams, because it was 75 milliliters of water. And we know the specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. You can use this equation to figure out how much heat the sodium hydroxide released. All that heat was absorbed by the water. And then you can divide by the mass of sodium hydroxide that was used. Uh, and we can convert that into moles so that we have kilojoules of heat released per mole. This is an exothermic reaction. All right, we're going to try it again now with a different salt. So we'll set that kilometer aside. We'll get a new one over here. We'll take 75 milliliters of room temperature water again, pour it into our second calorimeter. We'll find the initial temperature of this water. And this time we're going to be using a different salt. We're going to be using potassium chloride this time. Potassium chloride for our second trial. Uh, I'll measure out a sample of potassium chloride. Uh, so the initial temperature of wa our water is going to be 21.3 degrees Celsius. This is just room temperature tap water. Again, 75 milliliters, just like in our first trial. And this time we have a different salt. This time we have potassium chloride. And our starting mass here is 5.98 grams of potassium chloride. All right, just like I did before, I'll take the potassium chloride and dissolve it in the water. We'll stir. And as this salt is dissolving in water, 
we see again the temperature of water is changing. However, this time, the temperature of water is decreasing. So this is an endothermic reaction. As the potassium chloride dissolves in water, it absorbs heat from the water. It takes heat away from the water, therefore making the water colder. This is an endothermic reaction. And so we're going to stir until it completely dissolves. And we get a final temperature of the water. Looks like it's completely dissolved. And it looks like 16.3 was the final temperature of the water. 16.3 was the final temperature of the water. That's the coldest temperature that the water got. So this time, the temperature change of the water is negative because the temperature decreased. So when you figure out using the equation Q is equal to delta T times mass times specific heat, you'll use a negative temperature change for the water because the water got colder. Uh, since the water got colder, it means that the reaction must have been absorbing heat. So delta H of the reaction is going to be a positive number. And you have all the information you need to do the calculations to find the heat of solution of sodium hydroxide, which was exothermic, and the heat of solution of potassium chloride, which was endothermic. So two salts dissolved in water, one absorbed heat from the water, one released heat to the water.